uh, what we're going to be talking about, which is uh, a question that I feel like a lot of people have asked. And that question is, if I'm saved, why am I still sinning? And I think that everybody who calls themselves a Christian has probably asked this question of themselves once or twice, uh, or maybe all the time, or heck, maybe you're even asking it of yourself right now. And it's a good question, I think. The Bible talks about you know, if we believe and confess that, that Jesus is Lord and that he is God's one and only son who was sent down to earth to die on the cross for our sins and then three days later rise again, um, if we believe that and um, confess it with our mouths as well, uh, then we will be saved. And the Bible also says that when we are saved, the Holy Spirit, who God sent down after Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. It becomes our running mate, our, our, our partner, the one who helps us. Um, and so he comes and lives in us. So, And it talks about how we're, we're made new as well. So if we're made new, why is there still this temptation? Why are we still tempted to sin? And why do we sometimes fall into that? Uh, so we're going to be looking at those things today. And hopefully we'll be able to answer a few of those questions for you as well. So if we look at this question of if we are saved, why are we still sinning? The answer is, is actually, it's pretty simple, but complicated at the same time. And I know that makes no sense, but you'll understand why uh, as we get into it a little bit here. You see, when, when we are saved, when, when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts, when we have the Holy Spirit come into our hearts, we are saved. We're made new. Uh, we're born again, basically, uh, as the Bible puts it. And so... Um, our spirit becomes this new uh, being, right? So this being that it craves righteousness, that craves to be more like Jesus, that craves to be in relationship with Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, is that we still have our earthly bodies to deal with our flesh, right? I'm still here. Uh, I'm not just a spirit. My, my body is still here. And that body was born with sinful tendencies, right? If we go all the way back to the beginning of, of the earth when God created Adam and Eve, right? That's kind of where that started, where temptation uh, entered and uh, Eve and then shortly followed after Adam uh, took part in that temptation and fell into it and gave into it and, and sinned by eating uh, of the fruit of the forbidden tree. And so ever since then, we have generation after generation been born into sin. And so that means that our flesh wants and craves desires of, of the earth of, of, of that, that are not of God, right? And so uh, we crave things uh, that give us pleasure, fast, quick, temporary pleasure, uh, but end up being incredibly detrimental for us uh, later on, right? So there's this like struggle between our spirit, our newborn spirit with the Holy Spirit and, uh, and wanting to live a Christ-like life and be in relationship with him. And uh, it's, it's warring against our fleshly desires, right? That don't want anything to do with God or his will for us and just want to be having fun and partying and maybe doing drugs or, you know, um, being promiscuous, having lots of sex, uh, uh, drinking lots of alcohol, uh, things like that, right? Lies, all the, th all the sin that you can think of. Uh, that's what our body wants to be doing because uh, it, it seems to our flesh like that is beneficial to us. Uh, and, and it's a right now thing, right? But, but as we continue to live, we can see that some of those sins have like a pretty quick actually uh, detrimental effect and others have, uh, may, may seem to not have any effect on this earth on us, but end up having a, an incredibly terrible effect on us uh, when, when we're, um, you know, com coming to the end of our life and, and, and wanting to be in heaven with God. You know, we look at the Bible and it, it gives us, you know, a pretty clear picture as to what sin it, it does in our lives, right? Um, it talks about how the wages of sin is death, right? So uh, if we are sinning, if, if the sin is our work, then death is the check, right? That's the check that we're given at the end of it. And that's not just talking about physical death because we all physically die. It's talking about eternal death, which is, uh, you know, a forever thing. It's eternal. Uh, and, and that's way worse. The thing is, there are so many of us that, that, that struggle with this. And I would, you know, I would bet money <laughs> that all of us struggle with sin on a daily basis. And so we are looking at, uh, at you know, why it is that we still sin. And we've kind of come to the conclusion that, that you know, that is a, a bigger part of that is, is, is our flesh, right? And you can look at examples of this in the Bible too. The Bible is full of these like heroes, iconic people, but like they all sinned. Uh, you know, Moses, uh, he was, uh, you know, an incredible, awesome person, right? He, he had a, a, a crazy upbringing, obviously, uh, where he was, um, 
basically floated down the river to escape death from uh, the Egyptians trying to put down, um, you know, the Hebrews' uh, firstborn sh children. He was put down the river, was taken in by Egyptian royalty, and uh, came up, obviously left that life, and then did all these amazing things with God. Like God, just miracle after miracle, um, and signs and wonders, uh, like crazy through Moses just to get the Egyptians out of Egypt after all that work Moses didn't even make it into the promised land because he got impatient uh, basically he got impatient he struck a rock with his stick when he wasn't supposed to when God specifically said not to do that and so he didn't make it into the promised land that doesn't mean that he didn't have you know a great God-filled life um, but it, you know it just goes to show that what what sin can do what the detrimental effects that it can have um, and that kind of mirrors, right? What we were talking about before, how, um, you know, sin, sin's wages is death, right? And so for Moses, it was not getting into the promised land. For us, it's the same thing, except that promised land is heaven. Uh, David, another great example, right? God calls him a man after his own heart. But the thing is, is that David messed up severely, right? This dude uh, saw a woman, thought, man, she is good looking, and decided to take her to bed. Uh, first off, you know, obviously that is wrong in, in itself. What else is wrong with that whole picture, though, is that David sought after a woman who was already married to another man. He, you know, had an affair with her and to cover it up, try, you know, sent this man uh, who was the husband to the front lines of a battle to be killed, basically to cover it up. And when God convict, convicted him through Nathan, he was overcome. The Bible says he was overcome with sorrow and guilt. Uh, and that's because he knew what God's heart was for him and he knew how much he had broken God's heart. And he literally was just like in the deep, deepest depths of his soul, just crying out for mercy. And you know what? God gave it to him. I think that is absolutely amazing. You know, even though he had just like, you know, basically messed up <laughs> at catastrophic proportions, uh, he was still able to find grace. And the story is the same for you and me friends uh we we can find grace we just have to want it we just have to ask for it right and the thing is is that i know that a lot of us can we can get into these like these sin these sin struggles where we're like we're kind of like it's just like a rut right where we keep on messing up and we keep on messing up and we're like man like i just like i'm so tired of struggling with sin but the thing is um and this is something that the lead pastor actually of, of new victory church which is the church that we're a part of uh, said, has said this a number of times and is, he says at least you're still struggling at least you're struggling with your sin right that means that you're wrestling with it you're trying to resist it you are resisting it you're you're struggling right you haven't given into it you haven't just just started justifying as to why you continue to do the things and trying to believe in your heart that they're okay so that you can keep doing them right you haven't given up you keep on wrestling with it and that's the important part right because God has a better life for all of us and that's just the, the the fact of the matter is that god has a better life for all of us he he wants a better life for all of us and that life is to live a life in freedom uh with him not a life uh sucked into the slavery of sin right and for for those of you who are you know maybe just kind of asking questions about god have never really met him before um it may seem like living however you want to is freedom and that, you know, a relationship with Jesus is just following a bunch of rules and oh, I got to I got to remember not to do this. I got to remember not to do that. I got to do this. I can't do that. It's not like that. I guarantee you, because I've lived on both sides of the coin. I grew up in a Christian home and then I fell away from God. I started just doing whatever I wanted. And you know what? In, in the immediate time, it felt pretty good. But as it continued to go on, I was like, this is not good at all for my life. I felt trapped by the lies that I was telling. I felt trapped by the pornography addiction that I had. And and I, um, I just felt trapped in my sin. And when I came back to God, it was the best freedom that I've ever felt. Does that mean I don't ever mess up? Heck no. I mess up all the time. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that I want a relationship with Jesus. And what that requires of me is to pick up my cross and follow him daily. That means denying my old self, right? And, 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 and following Jesus. Sometimes, yeah, I mess up. I screw up. I, I, I sin, right? And that happens. But the thing is, is that as long as we are always pursuing God and always wanting to be better and working to be better and, 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 and trying to be in more communication with God and trying to be more in his word and learning about his ways and his will for us and trying to live by that will 
through the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, the better it gets, really, honestly. And that's the thing is like, God doesn't want us to fail. In Jeremiah, it talks about how God's plans are not for us to fail. They're not of, of hopelessness. They are of hope and, and plans to, of success and, and fruitfulness, right? He wants us to succeed in life. He wants us to have a whole, uh, well-rounded, successful lives. And that starts with relationship with Jesus Christ, right? And so that's honestly your best way as we're looking at this. You know, you may ask, um, how, well, how? how? Like, how do, I, how do I stop sinning? How do I work towards sinning less? Right. Well, the answer is is just being in communication with God. The best way to avoid sin, to avoid temptation, is to be so busy being in love with God and being in pursuit of God and, and His will for you that you don't even have time to entertain sinful thoughts. That you don't even have time to entertain um, um, temptation. Right. Because the fact of the matter is is that uh, temptation is going to come no matter what. The devil is persistent in that because he does not want us to be in eternal relationship with God after we you know, move on, after we die uh, with, our, with our fleshly bodies, our, our earthly bodies. He doesn't want us to be uh, in eternal joy and peace with him, uh, with God. He wants us to be in eternal sadness, depression, and anger and resentment with him. Right. And so he's going to do whatever he can do to try and get us into those those positions. The temptation is just going to keep flying at you. And I, I guarantee the more that you pursue God, the more temptation is going to come after you. But also on the flip side of that, the more you'll understand how to handle it. Right. The Bible says to flee from sexual uh, immorality, to, uh, sexual temptation. Right. Because um, and this can be applied to to all sin. Um, but Paul is specifically talking about uh, sexual temptation because um, it, it can have some pretty detrimental effects to your body and to the, the people around you near and dear to you and the people that are involved in that sexual temptation with you and that sexual sin, right? But it applies to all, right? Temptation is something that you should flee from. You shouldn't even give it a second thought. Um, it, it, as, soon as, a, as soon as a thought enters your mind, because sometimes, you know, they, they're not of you, they're not of your brain, so they'll just enter your mind, get that thought out of your brain, right? The Bible says that we have control uh, through the Holy Spirit, through God, uh, we have the ability to control the thoughts in our mind. That means that as soon as a thought that is not from us comes in, or maybe it's just a, a fleshly thought that comes in, um, it, our, our responsibility is to immediately uh, evict that thought from our brains, right? And to, 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 to get off of that uh, brain wavelength, right? The best way to do that is to maybe start praying immediately, start talking to God. Jesus, take that thought in, in, uh, in Jesus' name. You know, uh, put on some worship music. Just start praising God. Open your word. That's a bet. That's a really, really, really good one. Uh, it's probably your best bet is to is to open your word and to be in prayer, um, and and just seek God's will for your life, right? And you think you know you say, well, what if I'm out and about and I don't have my Bible on me and I'm you know I can't listen to music and whatever. My bet is that you probably have one of these, right? A cell phone. Pretty much everybody has one uh, here in North America, and you can get an app called uh, the Bible app. And it's so awesome because you can actually look up keywords like sin, temptation, and it will bring you to like hundreds of Bible verses that talk about those things and how to deal with sin, how to deal with temptation. There are tons of Bible studies on there on how to deal with those things, right? And, and so that's your best bet is to just immediately change your thought process and just move on to something else, right? Um, and the big thing to remember is if you do, if you do mess up, um, the worst thing you can do is 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 allow the thoughts of shame, the feelings of shame, to really take hold because that creates a downward downward spiral. I know because I've been there so many times. Uh, the best thing you can do is just immediately open up the line of communication with God and say, "Hey, God, you know what? This is the thought I had, or this is the thing I just did, and I am so sorry. Please forgive me." and um, help me to be better in that area of my life, right? And you may say, well, God already knows, so why do I need to tell him? The only way I can explain it is this. If you have a friend, um, and for me, uh, like a big one is my daughter. I've got a three-year-old daughter. If she makes a mistake or messes up or breaks something or, or you know, sins or says something rude to somebody um, and she comes to me and tells me about it and she's honest with me and open with me right from the get-go, she says, Daddy, I messed up, I made a mistake, I broke this or whatever, and says, I'm sorry. It's amazing how much trust that builds with me as her father, right? And I'm just so proud of her every time that she does that because I'm like, yeah, that's the way to do it. Open lines of communication because 
I, I got to tell you, I'm a lot more upset when I know that she's done something and she's not telling me about it. Um, and only because I just want those relation, that relationship to be an open communication relationship, right? My, it, it's, it's like my heart breaks for her. But when she comes and tells me, I'm, I'm just so filled with joy. And so how much more uh, is God filled with joy? And how much more does he love us that he wants us to come and be in communication with him about things? Right, So it's always important to be making sure that we are talking to God about the things that we're struggling with, even though he already knows, because it just allows us to build that trust with him, that he has got everything under control, that he is the one that uh, can help us through these things. Because I know I've tried to do it on my own so many times, you know, positive affirmation words, you know, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, that stuff is like good, I guess. Um, and and it, it can help uh, to a degree, but nothing helps fully like the power of the Holy Spirit that God has given us. Um, and so I just want to say that, you know, if you're maybe new to this whole, you know, relationship with Jesus thing, or maybe you haven't been um, in relationship with God um, for a while, I would encourage you to go and read the story of the prodigal son in the Bible. You can Google it or whatever. If you've got a Bible, you can look it up in the Bible too. Um, but, but look it up. It's an amazing parable that is told and it, it just basically talks about um, a father's love for his son, even though the son messed up in a big way. Um, and I think it just, it, well, it does. It, 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 it mirrors uh, God's feelings for us, except God's feelings are magnified that much more. And so I'd really encourage you to read that story. Um, and, you know, if you need somebody to talk to about it afterwards, please hit me up. Honestly, um, you can hit me up on my personal Facebook uh, or Instagram. Uh, Facebook is Dustin and Nadia Pemberton. Um, Instagram is Pemberton.us. Uh, or you can send us a message on NBC Ignite um, at Facebook or Instagram, and, and I'd be happy to answer any questions or any concerns or get on the phone with you, you know, do a Zoom call, whatever you need, um, because I'd love to show you who Jesus really is and um, the fact that, you know, he just wants the best for us, right? That's what this is all about, because you know, we could keep on sinning and keep on apologizing and God would forgive us as long as our hearts were truly repentant. But his, the life that he wants for us is so much like greater than living in a life of, of repetitive sin um, and uh, being trapped in those, those, those habits and, and things, right? It, he has this, this plan for us to do great and amazing things and, and um, live a life in true freedom in relationship with him. And so, you know, I want us to all get there. I want us to all, you know, work towards that point. Again, there's no perfection expected. Uh, God knows that we're not perfect. That's why he sent Jesus down, right? That's the whole point of the gospel is to show us that we weren't perfect and that we needed help and that he was willing to send that help to us in the form of his only son dying on the cross. And so I just want to um, encourage you in that and, and encourage you to, you know, keep on fighting with uh, and keep on struggling with your sin. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't start to justify why certain things are okay. Uh, just keep on struggling. Um, keep on fighting the good fight, as it were. And, um, you know, keep on aiming towards, um, you know, pressing on uh, towards the goal, as Paul says. And, and um, you know, um, creating a, a eternal bond with Jesus, a, a deeper relationship with Jesus. Uh, that uh, is unlike anything you've ever experienced. I would strongly encourage you to, um, you know, if you, if you have a friend uh, that you know is maybe struggling with this um, or it has, has never met Jesus or are struggling in their relationship, send them this video uh, after you've watched it. Um, get them in contact with me if you need. Like I said, I, I just, you know, listed all the handles uh, that we have. And um, I, 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 because uh, I just, I just want to see so many people in relationship with God. And, and, and pursuing a life of true freedom in him. So uh, let's pray real quick, and then uh, you'll see me back on the live stream for just a couple of minutes. And um, yeah, so Father, I just thank you for uh, this person watching this video. God, um, that you see them. Father, you see their heart. God, and that you know everything about them. You know their struggles, God. And I thank you, though, that even though that is the case, that you still want relationship with them, God. Even though we're not perfect, even though we mess up and we go against your will time and time again, there is forgiveness, there is grace, God, um, and all we have to do is ask for it, Father. And so I just thank you, God, that you um, you sent Jesus uh, down to die on the cross, Father, and then rise again uh, three days later so that um, we could call you friend, Father, that we could be in eternal relationship with you. And I just thank you, God, that the life that you want for each and every one of us is 
a life of abundance you got a life of 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 um uh just uh freedom in you father that you love us so much that you don't want to see us fail ever god you want to see us succeed you want us to see us in closer relationship with you every single day and i i just thank you god that you are opening hearts to you right now um as i pray father and um god that you are speaking to people you are ministering to people right now in the name of jesus amen Okay, guys, so thank you so much once again for joining us for NVC Ignite. Um, we are uh, just so grateful, so blessed um, by all of you that watch our videos, and, and we're just um, so happy to be able to do this ministry, and, and hopefully um, uh, hopefully you're getting something out of this too. Um, if you are, you know, um, share it, uh, because the, the goal of ministry is to share is to share the Gospels with as many people as possible and that's a big part of what we do here we want to make sure that people are hearing the good news and so um if if you feel like you've got the time to do that just just drop our youtube page um uh, on your facebook or instagram or 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 twitter uh or tiktok whatever you've got uh, uh you know drop us a like drop our, our 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 pages there share these links with people so that they can uh, see the videos as well and um yeah, thank you once again, and I uh, hope you guys have a great October.